This thing working? Of course it's working, you dimwit. Turn it around. Did you get it? Got it. Ed finds a follower, student, and cameraman in his neighbor, Dale, a bored retired postal worker living on disability pension. The Bilderberg meetings take place in a different country every year. They are top secret and run by military intelligence. Meanwhile, Ed's life starts to unravel. First, authorities take his son away. Then Ed's wife leaves him. Ed convinces himself that they, whoever they are, want to demoralize him. The Bilderberg meetings serve the purpose of shaping world opinion, world economies, and world politics by manipulating the media. 
with the ultimate goal of enhancing and preserving that wealth and power. Other groups may be running the Bilderberg groups, like the Freemasons or the Illuminati, but that is conspiracy theory. Bilderberg is fact. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, I was so scared. I thought I'd never get out of here. Woo. What? Oh, security precaution, uh, standard procedure nowadays. We have to document every job in case of malpractice. It's called a locksmith cam. Oh my, oh my God. That's Dale. How's it going? How do you do? Oh, nice, nice to meet you. Yeah, the lock rusted from the inside out. Uh, that's why it wouldn't open. It's an old Dutch clinker. I... I'd replace it if I were you. Oh, yeah, sure. I... Yeah, well, here, I, how I, about you... this? Come on, I come, I want you come, yeah, thank you. Hmm, hmm, no, it's uh, <laughs> kind of kind of hard for, for an elderly woman to, live alone in the city, you know. That's... And, pardon? Oh, yeah, uh, my brother. I met him once, briefly. When? Well, a couple of years ago. Uh, I see. Are oh. you still in touch with him? Sydney. <laughs> he disappeared about six months ago. What? Yeah, yeah. Moved out of his apartment and, uh, left me with this suitcase and I don't, that's it. Vanished. No one knows where he is, so. Anyway, I'll take the lock and, is it expensive? No. Well, could you possibly come back Monday to install it? Because I have to go out yeah, of Monday. town. Sure. Yeah, sure. And I'll just give you a little, um, <laughs> something in the meantime, if I may. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So what now, big fella? Gotta get the bag. How? I'm a locksmith, remember? You're talking breaking and entering. May the Lord be with us. The content of Sid Schleiman's bag is a disappointment. Only history and conspiracy books. Ed has read all of them. But then, at the bottom, a note from Schleiman. A list of names. Perhaps the first clue. Are you sure this is what you want? This is it. Where did you get this? There is a story, no? It has tapes and books, uh, old, old stuff. What was the name of the bookstore? Oh, I didn't, I didn't refresh my brain cells uh, in three years, so I, what was his name? Uh, uh, nation, illust illustration or Ill illusion. Yes, <laughs> Excuse me. Are you Vito? Who wants to know? My name's Jack. What's the matter with you? I'm looking for a book. <laughs> Knock yourself out. It's a particular book. It's called Zenith. I don't know it. You sold this tape to a collector a few years ago. He said that you have the book. Get the fuck out of my store. I can offer you a good I deal. I said get out. What's to that? What? No. Whoa, whoa. Don't come back. Take it easy. Last chance. Or I just caught a thief stealing in my store. All right. 
cut to interior, Illumination Bookstore, the following night. You don't learn, do you? <clears throat> Damn fuck. Psst. No! <sighs> Characters are not developed. First act was weak. Too many subplots? You motherfucker. When was the last time you did anything noble or inspiring? Or at least intellectually? Challenging. Something that was not self-gratifying, you self-obsessed cocksucker. Look at you. Sitting back in your chair, just consuming pictures and words, and you understand nothing. <laughs> That's what I tell these fucking assholes. Everyone's a fucking critic. Every fucking dumbass and half-literate that walks through that door. They can't write. They don't read. But they can judge. Who the fuck are you to judge? Who the fuck are you to judge? Huh? With what? Did you write anything, huh? Did you produce anything worthwhile in your fucking life? Except perhaps some snotty little brats that are gonna grow up and be even dumber than you are. Vito is an angry man. All this shit He's always face. angry. It's not our responsibility. He is also a conspiracy buff. The, the important thing is. I've got the book, and it gets even better. After I identify myself as Ed Crowley's son, Vito digs out two more tapes. He sold tape number three only because he was desperate for money, but to him, Ed Crowley's a hero. I must admit, although he is quite insane, Vito does know many words. But then again, he still reads books. Go to tape number four. There are 13 names on Sid Schleiman's list. Ten of them are dead. Accidents, car crashes, suicides, cardiac arrests. To Ed, this is further proof of the grand conspiracy. But three of them are still alive. Still not sure about that camera. It's for the family. Yeah. But <laughs> With his sister's dying, she can't travel. This may be the last chance she gets to see him. He's in the rec room. Why is he handcuffed? He's a sex addict. What? He masturbates compulsively. He didn't know that? I, well, she didn't tell me. I'll leave you two alone. Mr. Oberts. Mr. Oberts, can you hear me? Doug? <laughs> Doug Alberts. Mr. Alberts, this is very important. You've got to talk to me. Damn, it's not in here. You were on Sid Schleiman's list. Do you remember Sid Schleiman? What do you know about Zenith? Damn. It's unbearable. Behold. Mr. Roberts. I show you a mystery. 
We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound on the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And Mr. Roberts, can you hear me? Change, for from henceforth, Mr. Roberts, and one house, please, divided three against two, and two against three, and the father shall be divided against the son. Please father, listen to me. The mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother. But there were please. False prophets also among the people. Mr. Roberts, look at me. False teachers. Mr. Roberts, please, people. please listen to me. Really, shh, shh, shh. Damnable heresies. Mr. Albert. Denying even the Lord who brought them and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Swift destruction. Shut up. Shut up. Are you, shut uh, up. Isn't all right? No, everything's fine. Are you sure? It's okay. I. Are well, you shouting? No, no, no. Doug just got excited when I told him about his sister. Well, he shouldn't get excited. No, I know, but it's, he's okay. He's, he's calm now. Sir? You need to leave. But it's all right. Sir. I'll be back. The second name on Sid Schleiman's list is Hank Mirren, an old friend of Schleiman. Mr. Mirren. Is this really necessary? Well, it's for documentation purposes only. It helps the investigation. When was the last time you saw Mr. Schleiman? I'm not sure. Maybe a month before he disappeared. I talked to the police already. No, no, I know, but this is a private investigation, and every detail might help. Sid suffered from manic depression. The last two years were unbearable. Nothing could help him. He saw only one way out. What are you saying? I think he killed himself. Huh? Well, where's the body? You gotta understand, Sid was always a little bit strange. Even as a kid, everyone thought, he's just shy. But there was more to it than that. He was sick. Did he ever mention something called Zenith to you? Sure. He kept blabbing about it all the time. Started off four or five years ago with these weirdo books and pamphlets he'd read. And then the internet, his mind just went. So, so that was yeah. all his fantasy, or? He was a deranged man. It's a sad story. Was he getting any treatment? He tried different drugs, doctors, nothing. Look, I gotta go. Wait, is there anything else you can think of? No, not really. I'm sorry. Cut. He was lying. Oh, he was just queasy. People don't like talking about that kind of thing. No, no, he was lying. Well, he said the guy was sick, even as a child. Well, parents fuck you up no matter what, but that's not it. Well, maybe it's true. Maybe he popped himself. Sometimes it's the most obvious explication. Yeah, right. Coming from Hank Mirren, there are absolutely no records on Mirren. Plus, he used to work for the military. Oh, come on, Ed. What's that got to do with it? You see that car? Huh? Behind us. Don't turn around. Look in the mirror. That car's been following us. Are you sure? They've been behind us ever since we left Mirren's. Now they're turning off, see? They realized we saw them. defines us. Even the unconscious is defined by language. Am I right, Jack, or what? You are preposterously dumb. Me? Dumb? Fucking cocksucker. What about semiology, huh? How the fuck would you ever communicate your retarded ideas? Read a book. Open Shut your eyes. Shut the fuck up! Get the fuck Suddenly, out. I'm surrounded by a raving madman. I don't even know how Vito ended up here. His family has become a dysfunctional family. It's time for them to leave. Jack can't concentrate. Jack can't read, and Jack has a good excuse to go out and search for Lisa again. Slow down to a blur. Fade, fade, fade.
三四，妈妈，一二三四，妈妈，一二三。What are you doing? What's this about? You tell me, Jack. Who do you work for? We ask the questions.
you're interested in language. You know what zenith means? The highest point in the heavens, directly above the observer. You're free to go. That's me, Jack, or Dumb Jack, if you will. And this is the story.